my friends are since. One thing that I quite like doing is keeping my eye out for old, weird and wonderful analog video enhancement devices. These are the kinds of things that you can pick up dirt cheap if you look about because people find them in their grandparents' garage or their parents' attic or something like that and they stick them on eBay just for a few quid to get rid of the junk from their house. And luckily for me, their junk is my treasure because these kinds of devices are ripe for circuit bending and creating the kind of beautiful, analog, glitchy, colourful video art that I like to use for my music videos. Now recently, on my eBay searching, I came across this thing. This is a video image processor from a company called ACT Electronics. This specifically is the VE3, and this one caught my eye for a variety of reasons. First of all, I quite like the ACT Electronics look. You know, this kind of old video game style font, I have to admit, suckered me in a wee bit. But also, this unit, as you can spot from the front, has only got image controls. So it's got the kind of standard things like colour and detail and things, which suggest that this can be circuit bent for video art. But it also doesn't have any audio controls, which is good because it means that this is quite a nice compact unit, because I'm not really interested in circuit bending any of the audio components. Now the other things that make this interesting is, on the back here, you can see that not only does it have com composite video output and input, but it also has S-video input and output, which is quite unusual in a video enhancement device like this. And S-video tends to be higher quality than composite, which means that this gives me a few more options for my video art. Now the other thing about this is that usually ACT Electronics devices are DC, uh, AC powered, sorry, and even though I don't know a whole lot about electronics, I do know that fucking about with AC power is a wee bit more dangerous than fucking about with DC power, or so I'm led to believe. And so I bought this because this was DC powered, but unfortunately when it turned up, as you can see from here, it quite clearly says 15 volts AC on it. There was a wee sticker on it that said, use 12 volt DC only. So I don't know how they were powering this unit or what they were doing. They included a 12 volt AC power supply. So I don't really know what was going on there. Anyway, I decided not to waste the nine pounds that I had spent getting this thing and decided I would circuit bend it anyway. Now at this point I have to say thank you to Pushkar brand. They make amazing kind of wild, wonderful circuit bent video enhancement devices. If you haven't seen their channel or their website, go check it out because they really do push the boat out when it comes to the devices, the kind of circuit bend. But they gave me some wonderful words of encouragement and also safety tips for working on this thing. So uh, thanks to them. And um, if you're gonna circuit bend any of these, devices don't do what I did, which was um, set my hair on fire when I was connecting up some of the bend points. It's a good reminder to always wear some kind of hair tying device or maybe beard net if you're a bearded person. On to the actual device itself. This is a particularly good unit to circuit bend despite the AC power consideration for a variety of reasons. The first one is that the case is this cheap plasticky feel. Well, it's not all that cheap, but it's kind of soft plastic and this is different from a lot of the other units that you'll find which are steel and trust me those units are a pain in the arse to drill into whereas this thing is extremely easy to drill into. The second thing is that there are there is lots of room inside the case in order to put all of your bits and pieces so you don't need to cram everything in. The whole thing kind of comes apart. The PCB is at the bottom and it means that all of your kind of modifications can sit on the top. Now when I first looked inside the unit I was a wee bit worried because the PCB looked a bit janky, there wasn't a whole lot of components in there and there was a bunch of bodge wires connecting different points together and so I didn't really know if somebody had tried to fix this or like enhance it in a different way before now or whether it was like that from the factory which sometimes happens with these old devices but there's also this hole in the side which like I don't know why NMD would have put that there it's a very strange thing to have found so who knows but uh, it didn't really impact on the unit itself so whatever. Now when I actually got in and started circuit bending it 
Um, I didn't expect to get too many great results from this because of the limited number of components. There's only something like three ICs in there. However, as it turns out, this has become one of my favorite DIY circuit bent devices because with the kind of switches and stuff that I've added on here, I found some bends that have just brought out like an explosion of color, which is exactly the kind of thing I really like. And I'll show you in a wee minute uh, what I mean by that. But to show you the kind of mods I've added on the top here, I have 11 different potentiometers around the outside and I've got a single switch. All of the mods here were largely just done by connecting different parts of the PCB, notably the ICs to one another and using uh, different potentiometers. Most of these are 10K in value, although a few of them are 5K. This connects two points in the PCB that didn't really work too well with the potentiometer. And so this kind of engages one effect or turns it off. As you can see up here, there's a wee spot for an LED. And this isn't just for show, this LED actually does form part of the modification circuit and it provides a wee bit of resistance for these points but also when you change this knob the amount of LED changes as well to show you how much uh, you know of the bend is actually going through which is pretty cool and I might make more use of that uh, in future. Now as you can see my kind of panel work still needs a bit of work because I, even, I didn't really measure things out properly and um, well this knob is a wee bit close to this knob, but it's fine, it still works. So what I'm gonna do now is show you the results and I'm not gonna talk around and I'm just gonna like run through a bunch of the effects and show you how it looks because it is actually very cool. Uh, I, if you spot any of these for very low money, you can feel free to tell me because I, I'm interested in exploring them a wee bit further. But for now, that's the ACTA Electronics VE3.